holy damn, there's two guys who want to fight me. Now, interesting. Uh, people will tell me all the time, oh, grab I'm not necessarily going to grapple them and take one person down when there's two people. I mean, you could, but the second person is going to be like uh, taking advantage of the situation and harming you severely, probably in the back of the head. And who knows what weapon he has on him, okay? So, what am I going to do? As I said before, grappling and striking are both very important. Of course, I'm a career grappler, okay? Now, check it out. I've seen people, I mentioned this earlier, I've seen five guys versus one. And what happens is, he gets thrown down the ground, and he's, he curls up on the ball screaming and was kicking and punching. I've seen this in several countries. I saw it in Brazil also one time, okay? So, what am I gonna do? If I'm just a boxer, I'm punching him, he's punching me, right? If I'm just a wrestler, take him down, well, guess what, he's on me now, okay? Combination. Imagine someone like Chuck Liddell, who is a good friend of mine, okay? That guy would be a problem. If three or four <laughs> average guys attacked him, he'd knock them all out. It's because, for sure, okay? It's because it's not easy to take him down. He has a wrestling background and he hits very hard. And he's a very tough guy, okay? So the thing is, stay right there. If I was here, they can both attack me. In this situation, I have to accept probably I'm going to get hit. It's just the way it is. I don't want to get hit, but you have to accept it, okay? Now, what if I was here? Well, now I'm only fighting one person. I am sacrificing some of my defense to get here. I, absolutely. But what other choice do I have? So, it could be a punch to get him over here, okay? Actually, grab him. I could maybe leave now, who knows? Okay, if I stay here, I know I love kung fu movies. I really do. I like them. Okay, but if you look in the <laughs> in the filming, you see eight guys around. They're all waiting and wanting to come forward. That's not how it is. That's what happens. Okay, if there was ten guys, it's much harder. But I've done uh, drills where I've successfully stayed on the outside of ten guys. They don't have to be in a perfect line as long as you don't have 10 sets of hands being thrown in your face or legs or whatever, okay? So I suggest in this case, I know I'm going to fight. Okay, I can't talk my way out. I can't leave voluntarily. I'm not going to just grab. I am at a punch. It's going to be not a jab. It's going to be stepping with the right, grabbing, and I'm here. Now I can at least, maybe I can leave. Or at least I'm fighting one guy at a time. They will try to, of course, they're going to try to soak around me. It's a hard situation. It's just reality. I'm not saying it's easy. And anyone who says it's easy, it might be easy if you're facing someone who's not ever trained in their life. <laughs> Let's say you're a high level badass athlete. Okay, yeah, you could do it. Maybe not even get hit, it's possible. But we're dealing with a serious situation right now, okay? And usually it's the person closest to me. I'm gonna, because of course, well, he's further away. Why would I attack him? Okay. Also, it's hard to get around behind him, actually. Think about that, okay? So, the jab, which I said earlier, if it's one-on-one, -on -one, the, the closest contact, which is this and this, I prefer to use that. It's closest, hardest to see, okay? But, in this case, hands up, right? Not that it's too aggressive. I'm inciting, I'm escalating already, visually. And by the way, who am I in the face, okay? No, my hands are up, I'm stepping, and I'm hitting. Boom. If it hits or not, even the shoulder, I'm now grabbing and I'm pulling him in. Now, I can hold him and you know what? I'm punching, I'm keeping people here until, I, oh, once again, at least he's, he's punching, punching, oh, punching. Oh, no, if they're two trained fighters, it's gonna be a very short day and a very long day of misery afterwards, okay? Because that's a problem. I'm not going to sugar, sugarcoat this issue, okay? That's the reality. Don't try to fight three guys, two, four guys, two guys. You could, but um, definitely the odds are not in your favor. Input. Yeah, in a similar situation, um, multiple attackers. Again, I keep coming back to the situational awareness. I made mistakes prior to that. I made a lot of mistakes prior to that. 
this is where I'm going to be a little bit proactive. So if I'm in this situation and you're, we have two attackers coming, whoever's in the lead is going to eat the fury. He's going to eat the fury long before I let it get to this. Which is me right now. So he's getting close. So he's going to eat the fury enough that whatever I need to do, I'm going to try to create as much space. So again, we're swinging up, we're swinging up, multiple attacks here, and then I'm going this way and trying to roll. So I'm going to create so much energy into this guy that the whole, the whole place is going to clear out. Then we'll see an escalation of violence that is unique to that environment. Um, and that's what you have to be able to do when you're mentally conditioned. It's not, it's similar to when you're creating the distance when you're walking in, it's creating this distance so I'm here. So when I'm, when I'm coming with this fear, stand back a little bit because I don't want to hit you when I go here. But as he's coming in, I'm swinging this arm, so I'm going, ah! and I'm going to go through. And then, but you, you see the escalation of violence. We're, we know it's coming and it still is like, the hell just happened. I didn't take it as a bar fight. I took it as survival. And that's what you need to do. You need to be mentally conditioned to do that. Check. I like it. Now, what he did, I think, was a little more direct about finding the avenue of escape, which which is awesome. Which is what we're looking at, actually. How to beat eight guys in a fight. Okay, possible. Why? What? What's the purpose? Are you crazy? Okay. It's possible, but don't be like that. Don't get in trouble. There's no reason to be like that. Okay, really survive, live another day. Okay, one on one fight. I even try to avoid that. Okay, and you'd be surprised by your body language and maybe self confidence. People don't usually want to fight you for some reason. Okay, but if you have to fight, I was addressing more of the whole I'm in a continuous fight, keep one guy in front of me, not two around me. He, he had a different, interesting approach of separating us, making space. To where, at the same time, both of us can't really attack him. Because he used overwhelming aggression against one person. And also, well, from experience, I've seen it done. Or maybe I've done it. I'm not going to say. <laughs> I'll pick the leader of the two or the three. If that person is knocked out right away, I've seen it. the other two or three go... They're confused, okay? So there's all kinds of ways you could approach this, okay? The thing is, the person who's closest to you causing the threat is the immediate first response, in my opinion. And he agrees, right? He did it slightly differently. I liked it. I think it was more direct what you did to, to leave and to save your family, to, who knows, to get outside. Something is important. You have to get out of there, okay? Who knows? Uh, who knows what kind of weapon I'm having, right? Sure. So to, to recap, as, as everything comes back to life experiences and, and, and different situations that you've been in through your life, the mindset that you walk around with. When I was growing up, uh, as a young man, I thought it was a lot of fun to get into bar fights and figure out what I could get away with and how, much, how hard I could hit and what different reactions would be and it was a good pastime. Now that I've, I've matured a little bit, and I'm not saying that much, but a little bit. A little bit, yeah. I've matured enough that I understand I carry myself a little bit different. I carry myself that if I'm gonna fight, it's not because I'm fighting for fun anymore. There's times I do that, but I usually do it in the academy. Now when I fight for, if I have to fight, it's for my family or for my life. Sure. Um, so the mindset's a tad bit different, a tad bit different. Um, I get I get the fun fighting out in the academy, and then I get the mental conditioning on when I leave there. You know, and it's also part of the, the, the responsibility. I carry a gun every day, and when I have that responsibility of escalation of force, I know that if I need it, I'm not gonna hesitate and I'm gonna use more force than they've ever seen. Oh, all right. For the Californians out there, I'm from California, what he's saying is the best way to stop a bad guy with a gun is... With a gun. Good guy, <laughs> a good guy with a gun. Absolutely. Just so you know, Californians. But with that being said, it's a, it's, it all ro rolls into this. The, this is real survival stuff that we're talking about. It's real self-defense, it's self-preservation, it's having situational awareness, it's being able to do what's required of you at that time. Check. Agree completely. So basically, slightly different approaches, but either way, he wasn't facing two threats at one time. He separated, right? I separated myself around in a different way, different ways, and they both work, right? Um, I like Sergeant's approach better because it's more direct, fast, and he can leave. That's awesome. And the biggest part that we did different is when Dean attacked, he was already being attacked. 
I attacked, and again, my, mentally, my mental condition wouldn't let me say this after math, but I attacked first. When there's overwhelming force, I chose where I needed to go, and I attacked that first without hesitation. Right on. There we go, guys. 